the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you introduction we're doing now and i want to make sure i get that done real quick so that you can actually get into the words we'll break this the, the teaching uh into parts a b through d whatever and because we want you to be able to digest it right this is a study platform amen it, it, you know we always talk about the fact that we want to teach the gospel yeshua's way yeshua is jesus name in the hebrew that's what they called him back then yeshua and we want to go by what is written, just like when Christ was tempted in the wilderness, he, he dealt with the devil by saying what is written. The title we're talking about is your traditions of ignoring what God hates makes the word of no effect. And what I'm trying to tell you that is that in many cases we're trying to, uh, we, we, I mean, when you talk about what people have done the, the ministry of disqualification, the ministry of death. When we talk about people who have done uh, racism, we talk about lynching, we talk about uh, killing people uh, because they don't conform to what we consider Christianity. That, that Those are traditions of men to sit there to, to, to hurt people. Uh, you know, we did the crusade and the, the Spanish Inquisition and, and, and the militancy of what they call Christianity. And, and, and that's not teaching of Christ. Christ didn't teach violence. Christ didn't teach that you was to do. You'll find in the gospel where Christ taught you to do violence to people. He told you, he gave you a commandment to go and preach the gospel. And that's what we need to be able to do and not use the traditions of, of, of religious folks who sit there and try to intimidate you, hurt you, beat you up. And, and the bad thing about it is trying to impose a law on you that you don't even do, or they don't even do, excuse me. So the point is, we need to be able to get back to the doctrine and the teaching of Christ, not the traditions of men who makes the word, not, the word of God a matter of fact. And these are the scripture I want to go by. Please don't do that. Don't set yourself up for failure because you're sitting there working on how somebody else is supposed, how you're supposed to get over somebody else. And then you do the mob mentality and you sit there and try to do it. Uh, oh, it's your eternal soul we're talking about. That's more important than political parties and, 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 and racism and hate and division. That's what's it more important to you, even for your children. What legacy you want to teach them? And you think? And we've seen that. We've seen that hate. We've seen the division. We've seen it all recorded and recorded and documented. And you teaching and endorsing them to do it? You doing it today? You honoring evil? What do you mean? Why? What profits a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? What are you even profiting for your own children? To teach your children? Well, I don't, what you, that mean? Let me just make sure that this is, let's call it what it is. You, if you want to teach hate and division, if you want to teach racism, you think that that is the way to go, then as long as you understand, and maybe you always see it, that you're going to eternal death. And no nappy head preacher, can take, get you out of here because they taught you how to hate. And you're going to die in your hate. Look at this right here. Look at I think it's, 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 it's worth pointing out. I'm sitting there. I just gave you this will. I did the Lord's Prayer. I'm, I, I want you to sit here and you tell me a you situation where God's going to know you 
by you are bringing hate. This is the scripture said, maybe, because I, I, I just want to make sure you understand this, that you talk to your pastor, talk to your priest, and look at this scripture here. Matthew 7, 21. It says, Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. Are you, are you tracking where I'm coming from? Let me come off this for a second again. Just like the Lord's Prayer. Remember to say in the Lord's Prayer, he said, After his prayer, therefore pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. I'm tired of you playing games. I'm tired of you playing games with people. I'm tired of you playing games with yourself. This gospel need to be taught. And we need to sit there and understand that if we receive the good news, which we all can, we need to understand he wants us to align it with his will, not the world's will. That's why he was sitting there with this red. Not everybody will say, Lord, Lord, send to the kingdom of heaven. And but for those who do the will of the Father. The will of the Father is not hate. The will of the Father is not unforgiven. The will of the Father is not killing and murdering and discriminating and all those stuff. That's not the will of the Father. And then some of you religious people, like I said before, you sit there and say, because you went to the club, you didn't even go to heaven. No. I, that ain't gonna keep you from going to heaven. You, you, that's not gonna keep you from going to heaven. Oh, you went to the club last night. That's not gonna keep you from going to heaven. Oh, you danced. You was dancing. That's not gonna keep you from going to heaven. Oh, you sit there and drink some beer. That's not gonna keep you from going to heaven. Oh, you got braids in here. That's not gonna keep you from going to heaven. Oh, you had pork. That's not gonna keep you from going to heaven. Oh, you didn't go to church. That's not gonna keep that, you. Oh, you didn't go to church building. That makes sure this I start saying that right, right? Because they're talking to you, they're in the church, right? They, it, and with the church, because when two or three guys are paid, he's in the midst of them. That's the church. So they have a church, right? You, by like you sitting there talking to them, they are now at church because you're the church. Well, maybe not the church. That's that's the point. Because if you sit there and do the discrimination and do the hate and everything else against people, then you're right. You're not the church either. So they didn't go to church, and you didn't go to church. You went to a building, and you ain't learned nothing. You must say, I, 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 let's see you teach nothing. Well, she didn't teach nothing. And she didn't teach his will. And she's not teaching, or he's not teaching the will of God. You got some people saying, I want a woman that preaches. Uh-uh. That ain't going to keep him from going to heaven. Of who's preaching or who's it. It's doing the will of God. How many of you are teaching? How many of you are actually seeking to do the will of God? Or are you sitting there working on hate and division and putting somebody down because you think that's important? It's his will to be done. Christ demonstrated that to you in the Garden of Gethsemane. He prayed three times. I mean, he had some issues with it. But he walked away and said, nevertheless, let thy will be done. So maybe some of us need to sit there and forgive people because that's his will. To love one another because that's his will. To go preach the good news, that's his will. I thought you sitting there, well, I want to make somebody feel bad. That's God, that ain't getting you to heaven. And making them feel bad, the Bible said, he said, in Romans 8, he said, now there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. So how are you sitting there trying to put guilt and shame on somebody is is, is is when the word telling you, the will of God is telling you that there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. That's the whole point. Hey, Jimmy, that's the whole point. I, you, you, we got to understand. Hey, brother, 
we, we, we got to understand his will be done. That's critical. If we don't do his will, if we don't focus on his will, we focus on our own will, we try to project the will of somebody else, then we are not doing God's word. And I don't want people to go to hell. I don't want people to die. I don't want the children to go to hell. I want people to go to heaven because that is his will. And that's why we're supposed to preach the good news. His will be done. Not our will. Not our, our whatever we aspire to be. Aspire to be a child of God because he gives it. So back to the scripture here. Jim, I'm sitting there reading uh, Matthew uh, 7, 21. And, and the main thing is encouraging people to, to do the will of God. And I said right here, Matthew 7, 21, not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord. Then you sit there, I'm a Christian. I'm a child of God. I'm a white child of God. I'm a black child of God. I'm whatever you want to call yourself. He said not everybody that says that shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. If you don't do the will of God, if you're not doing, just like Christ said in the garden of Gethsemane, nevertheless let that will be done. But we want to sit there and hate somebody. We want to sit there and discriminate against somebody. We want to sit there and destroy somebody's character and nature. Then we're not doing his will. He said, if you don't do that with the will of the Father, he said, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, how we not prophesied in that day? And that name cast out devils. And that name done many wonderful works. You know, Lord, I kicked that person out of church the other day. That's wonderful work. Lord, I sit there and had, I didn't put no braid in my hair. That's wonderful works. Lord, I sat there and went to church. I checked the box. I did that, Lord. I did, but I still hate that person. I'm not gonna forgive that person. I'm not gonna forgive that person. I, but I done wonderful works though, Lord. I, I sat there and did the things that I think are wonderful for you. Because a lot of my friends told me it's wonderful. A lot of the people that agree with me thought it was wonderful. They discriminate against people, hate people, go after people. Oh, my ancestors did great things, Lord. No. He said, in verse 33, he says, And then will I profess unto them that sit there and, and practice hate, practice discrimination, practice murder, and practice all kinds of bad things, acted in a lukewarm manner, and said, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work in equity. I never knew you. You sat there and hate somebody. You sat there and discriminate against somebody. You sat there and put somebody in guilt and shame. The Bible told you to tell them there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. You taught them to do your anger and point of them not doing the will when I told you to do the will. You got the Bible told me that I got to get my act together before I can start pointing at somebody else. So I need to sit there and encourage somebody and say, look, I'm pointing toward Jesus for you. I'm pointing for Jesus for myself. John 14, 6 said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. But I'm sitting there trying to tell them they got to go by my political party. I got to go by my denomination. I got to go by my color skin. Then you're not pointed to Christ. You're pointed to something else. And he's going to sit there and say, I never knew you. Because the number of those people, the number of things, the number of things this world is going to advocate on your behalf. And you can't even, if you know that you did evil, you know that you sit there and hurt people, you know you sit there and discriminate against people, he's going to sit there and say, I never knew you. Because I told you to go preach the good news, that's my will. But you sit there and teach evil. You sit there and take suppression and put somebody down. And God is saying, I, I don't know you. And that's a bad thing to hear. Because we focus on the fault finding somebody else instead of focus on God. And that's why we need to sit there and say, please, don't go to hell. Do his will so you can make it because of him. 
I put that here <laughs> because a lot of people sit there and 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 and, and that's how I'm talking about, about discriminating fault finding. This in the title of this uh, teaching is it do it. Matter of fact, let me just show that to you real quick because you may have seen it. And then I'm going to come right back to the scripture. This is the title. Teaching the gospel, which is the theme, Yeshua's way, which is the English, which is the Hebrew name for Jesus, it is written, your traditions, and that's, that's the critical piece I'm trying to talk about today, your tradition of ignoring what God hates makes the word of no effect in your life. But it, it, it has an effect in mine. The word of God it has an effect on me because I decided to let it have an effect on me. And I, I know I got some issues I got to work on. I know I haven't arrived in my own area, so I definitely can't sit there and hold my disgrace, my anger, my disagreement, or anything on somebody else. I got to focus on me. The Bible told me to work on my own salvation first. I'm sitting there trying to put somebody else down and, and discriminate against them when I got to work on my own issue. He said, "You make." The word of no effect by ignoring what God hates. And that's the title. And then this is, that's why I'm sitting there. This is where we at this scripture right here. Six things God hates. Yea, seven are abomination unto him. That means it, he, he, it's an abomination. I mean, he, he spits it out. He spews it out. Same thing with lukewarmness, right? When we sit there and operate in the middle. He says six things. Yea, seven are abomination. Look at these are the things. And they come in different titles. The first one, a proud look. When somebody sit there and sit there and operate on the flesh and say, I'm, a, I'm black power, or I'm white power, or I'm Chinese power, or Asian power, or I'm Hispanic power, or any other power, any other pride. He said he hates that. And yet people do it. People put their trust in their flesh. People put their trust in their wealth. And, and put their pride based on that. And he said, I don't like that. I don't like that. You better than somebody else? Because of what? Come on. Now, this is the biggest part. This in practice from, from the beginning of time with man. Even when the first two men are born, the first man that was born, Cain, he said, Dan and said, God said to you, well, where's your brother? Am I my brother? And is he, am I his brother keeper? God said, I ain't asking you guys, where is he? That boy ain't getting my answer. And then God said, what have you done? People have been doing that for decades now. Lying tongue. To sit there and act like you got your act together and you're lying. And then you're going to sit there and discriminate against somebody else and you know you got this shit going on. That's what he's sitting there saying. A lying tongue. Look at this one. This is a big one. Hand to shed innocent blood. You know, you can go with the police. He had a gun. I didn't see it, but I thought he had a gun, so I killed him. I discriminated against somebody because I didn't like him. Uh, I know I was supposed to love him, but I was going to kill him because I considered him a threat. I was fearful for my life. You're lying. But that's the thing about it. He said he hated hand to shed innocent blood. People to sit there and kill somebody because they don't like them. They don't like the color of their skin or they discriminate or anything else. There's no justification for killing anybody, period. And that means say hand to shed in some blood. Look at this. This is a big one. That's where discrimination comes in, right? A heart, your spirit, that devises wicked imagination against somebody. You sitting there, people. Those of us who are alive and I, and you, I got to see you on Facebook, some on Facebook and everything. A hand, what does it say? Excuse me. A heart that devises wicked imagination, constantly sitting there finding out how I can bring somebody else down, how I can sit there and scheme to make sure they're not successful. I'm going to sit there and do uh, from a group of people to an individual. Uh, that's called a heart that devises wicked imagination. And here's a big one. The feet that be swift and run into mission. 
going, I've tried to find my way to hurt somebody, find my way to discriminate against somebody, find my way to put somebody else down, find my way because look, look, and especially we don't allow the we don't allow the political spectrum to to, to, to become the norm in our life and our culture that many of us should ignore one group or the other because we want to advise wicked imagination. The feet that swift and run into mission. Making lies, intercepting lies, and using tools just to, 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 to get over, just to, 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 to manipulate things of this world uh, and keep the status quo. What about this one, 19? A false, a false witness that speaks lies. He is uh, basically the lying tongue in the next, in verse 19, and he speaks lies. <clears throat> he showed those two things out of, he, he, he re-emphasized that one. It's, it's packaged another way, but it's still saying the same thing. A lying tongue, a false witness, the biggest lies. Those are two, those are lying tongues. He felt that those so important that he, he put those twice. Because it was a lie, because we don't like somebody because of what they are. We don't like somebody because of what they did. But he told us to forgive people. He told us to love people. But we gonna sit there and say, I, I'm gonna use these justifications to, to, to speak. I'm gonna I'm, I'm speak lying. I'm gonna lie against something that I don't like. And then the last thing, that's what I'm talking about with this political environment today. And he that soweth discord among the brothers. And if we don't believe that the political spectrum today is not about sowing discord, it's not about dividing this country. The Bible said a house divided cannot stand. And yet we have mastered it. We have brought the political spectrum to, to the forefront of our society to the point that we are dividing the country. And we are continually so lies and discord on one another. One another. That, that is just not acceptable in the eyes of God. Do we, so, so when you go, what are we going to do when you go before God? What do you, I mean, any of us, any of you listening, what are you going to do when you go before God? You sit there, you know that you barely gave, spoke lies. You know you shared innocent blood. You know you had a power of blood. These are sick things that God hates. Seven is abomination unto him. And we sit there and think, oh, well, are these things okay? Your traditions of ignoring what God hates has made the word of God no effect. And that's what I'm sitting there in a concern with people. And I pray that people listen to the words that's coming off the book. What's written. And make sure you don't fall into that. And I'm going to wrap this up with this, these last three slides. <laughs> because, maybe it's two, or some four. <laughs> the point is this. This is important. I got to get this out, man. This, that's what you put on my heart and put out there because I have arrived. And I don't think nobody else has either. And therefore, we need to work on our own salvation. And this is this is this is what happened when Jesus was actually here. The tradition of man, that's what the title is talking about. Your tradition of ignoring what God hates has made the word of God of no effect. I'm sitting there now giving an example from the scriptures showing you that the children of Israel, the Jews, the leaders, those who both in time to be preachers didn't recognize Christ because of their traditions. And this is what Christ dealt with them because of their traditions. Look at this. In Mark 7, verse 1. Then came together unto him the Pharisees and certain of the scribes which came from Jerusalem, the capital. And when they saw some of the disciples eat bread with defiled that is to say, with unwashed hands, they found fault. And the Pharisees and all the Jews said they washed their hands off, eat not holding the traditions of elders. And when they come from the market, they said they wash, they eat not. And many other things there be, which they have received to hold as the washing of cups and pots brazen vessels in of tables. Then the Pharisees and his scribes asked him, why walk not 
thy disciples according to the traditions of the elders, but he read with unwashing hands. Why? He asked that question. He answered. Oh, they asked the question. He answered. But it said unto them, Well, as Isaiah prophesied to you, hypocrites. And that's the problem I'm concerned about is so many people are hypocrites and teaching children to be hypocrites. And then their children go into hell and they go into hell. And they said they don't understand why they're going to hell. Because you're not doing the will of God. You're doing the will of your traditions or the traditions of man. He said, this people honor me, oh God, Lord, people, listen to the scripture. Those that listen alive. These people or this people. Right, and, and you can go with this people now. What this people? All kinds of people. People call themselves uh, Christians. These people honor me with their lips. And we do a good job of that. But their heart is far from me. Their heart is far from his will. Because if our heart was with his will, then we'd be close to him. But because we want to do our will, we want to do our impression, we want to do what we think is right. We want to sit there and show that we're dignified and others are not. We want to sit there and burn people to the cross. We want to sit there and do the crusade. We want to sit there and do the slave trade. We want to sit there and do the Jim Crow laws and the We want to do all those things. And we want to sit there and still do modern day religion and, and, and discrimination and everything else. We want to do that. And yet we're going to sit there. Many of those people go to church and sit there and put their hands up in the air. But some churches don't even do that to you. That's just too dignified for them. They'll sit there and say, Amen. God bless you. But there's some people that go to church and have the hallelujah shit and do all those things. Honoring God with their lips, but their heart is far from them. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you.